The Art of Miss Chu, written and illustrated by Patricia Polacco. I was back in California, and I loved school, hard to believe, because once I had a lot of trouble reading, but not anymore, and I really liked my new teacher, Mr. Donovan. He was from Ireland and had sky-blue eyes, a laugh that sounded like bells ringing, and a great Irish accent. He loved telling stories about his family back home, especially his father. Seemed like he always had a smile on his face. But he didn't have a smile the day he handed back my first social studies test. I could feel my face get real hot when I unfolded it. An F again. The trouble was everyone read faster than me. Even though I knew the subject real well, I'd run out of time before I was finished. I started having stomach aches when I knew a weekly test was coming up. Mr. Donovan finally sat me down. You know the subject, Tricia. What you need is extra time. He started giving me the time I needed, and sure enough, I began passing tests. But that didn't help my other problem. There was no real art class in my new school. Just art on a cart for 30 minutes once a week. One day, Mr. Donovan saw one of my drawings. He picked it up and hung it on the bulletin board. Patricia, you have remarkable talent. All of the kids in the class crowded up to look at the picture. Man, oh man, can you draw, Davy Mulford remarked. Wow, Rick Shubb agreed. Even Neon Price, who never spoke to me because she was so popular, was impressed. I felt so proud. It wasn't a day later when Mr. Donovan told me about Miss Chu, head of the high school art department. She has a special program for young artists on Tuesdays and Thursdays. When I showed her your drawing, she said she wanted you in her special class. Now what do you be thinking about that, Miss Trish? I love drawing. Sometimes when I was drawing, I'd forget to breathe. I danced on air all the way home that day. I couldn't wait to tell my mother. That first Tuesday, I'd never walked so fast in my life as I did to get to Miss Chu's class on time. I had never seen a room like hers, windows that went from ceiling to floor, giant easels at one end, rows of drying racks at the other, and paint everywhere. I didn't know anybody. Then Miss Chu breezed into the room. Her smock was so covered in paint, it was a painting itself. She was tall and slender, and she spoke with a Chinese accent. We have a new student today, she said, motioning toward me with her beautiful long fingers. Her name is Teresa Barber. Teresa? No, I wanted to shout. My name is Patricia. But Miss Chu had already spun around and was passing out sketchbooks. From that day on, I was Teresa. I could barely understand Miss Chu's accent. In this class, we are going to learn to speak another language. She touched her heart, the language of art. Art, a language? But Miss Chu went on. It isn't spoken. It is a language of emotion and images. But first, she told us, you need to learn to see. See? She plopped down two salt shakers in the middle of the table. Open your sketchbook. Take up your pencils. Now draw the shakers. But first, your friends. See them? Don't just look at them. See them. See how the light dances through the glass and makes a shadow pattern on the table? Yes, I saw it. Draw it, said Miss Chu. See how you can make your pencil line darker and lighter? She changed the line from dark to light. Yes, I see that too. Yes, Teresa, Miss Chu said. You have it. Now do your drawings again. Move the shakers off center. Let them run off the page on purpose. Make them bigger. Get the dancing light as it makes its shadow. She sang as she moved from table to table. She made us draw those shakers six times in six different ways, and at the end of the day, she said, Take your sketchbooks everywhere with you. First see, then draw. Couldn't wait. I took my sketchbook everywhere with me. On the bus home, I drew people sitting in their seats, even the bus driver. When I got home, I drew apples in a bowl and my cat, Tilly. After dinner, I made my mom and my brother, Richie, sit so I could draw them. Ain't you got no homework, my brother groaned. This is homework, I said. Sit a little longer. I almost have you. The next day, after I had finished my assignment, I asked Mr. Donovan if I could make a drawing of his da, his father, from the photo on his desk. I tried to remember everything Miss Chu told me. The next art class, Miss Chu called me up to her desk. Everyone else had handed in one or two sketches. I had done over twenty. Your drawings are very good. 
Her eyes smiled as if we had a secret. The cat, the apples, your mother and brother, you've captured every detail. I particularly like your use of negative space. Negative space? See this drawing, Teresa? What do you see? She held up a picture. Two people looking at each other. Anyone could see that. Now, Teresa, instead of looking at the two faces, look at what is in between them. Nothing. What? A, uh, tall stem cup? First you read negative space. Now you are reading the actual object. What an idea. I started looking at all of my own pictures for negative space. I was so happy, but a few weeks later, Mr. Donovan was called to the office. When he came back, his eyes were red. He couldn't seem to talk. He just stared out of the window. Finally, he spoke. Mida died today, he whispered. Our whole class got out of our seats and tried to comfort him. He left for Ireland the next day. That is when we got Mrs. Spaulding, a substitute. She never smiled. Worst of all, when I was taking my weekly test, she came up behind me and ripped the paper out from under my pencil. Time's up, she barked. But Mrs. Spaulding, I'm not finished. Mr. Donovan always lets me have extra time because I'm not Mr. Donovan, and when I say you're finished, you're finished. Of course I failed the test. That's when she got just plain mean. Your time would be better spent studying for your test instead of leaving this school to take art classes, she hissed. And I'm going to see to it. I can make that happen. I tried to be brave and not tell Miss Chu, but in class I began to cry and blurted out the threat that Mrs. Spaulding had made. Miss Chu began to shake her head slowly. Teresa, she said, you say you can't read fast enough to finish your tests. I nodded. I watch you draw and you begin a drawing by drawing what is in the negative space. I remember the picture of the two girls facing the glass. When you see a word, I think you don't see letters at all at first. I think you first see the space around them, the pattern they make. No wonder your reading takes you so much time, Miss Chu said. I smiled, but I still wasn't quite sure what she meant. I know someone I think can help. A reading specialist. No one is taking you from this class. I sprang to my feet and hugged her. And tomorrow, Teresa, I am signing you an easel. You are not only ready for painting. Maybe you can be part of the high school spring art show. The following day, Mrs. Spaulding announced we would take a timed citywide test that would determine what the class we would take next year. We'd have 45 minutes to finish. I only finished half of the test. I knew my art class was over. But when I told Miss Chu, she said, we'll just see about that. With my mom's permission, she would take me herself to see her friend, the reading specialist. After class, Miss Chu took me to her car, a convertible. As we drove off, the car sounded like it was growling, and I loved it when we drove by my school and Mrs. Spaulding actually saw us. Dr. McClare played what seemed like a hundred reading games with me, but I wasn't afraid. I knew he was trying to help. When he finally called Miss Chu in, he said, You are spot on, Miss Chu. She reads patterns, not words. This takes time. Miss Chu wanted a meeting of all the players. Everyone came, the principal, Mrs. Spaulding, Miss Chu, Dr. McClare, and my mother. Mrs. Spaulding said the extra art class was simply a distraction. Trisha is drawing instead of studying. Miss Chu said, But she needs extra time to finish tests, all tests. When she and Dr. McClare said that I see things differently than most students, Mrs. Spaulding scoffed, as if to say, What can an art teacher know about how a child learns? I don't tell you how to teach a child to draw. It was as if she didn't think art teachers were real teachers, that maybe art wasn't even a real class. Mr. Donovan came back exactly two days later. I couldn't help myself. I ran to him and hugged him. I am so glad you are back, I said. When someone else told him what Mrs. Spaulding was trying to do, he got really red in the face. And I don't know exactly what happened after that day, but it seemed that Mrs. Spaulding was no longer needed as a substitute, not in the whole school. So I went on to Miss Chu's class every Tuesday and Thursday. Of course, as soon as Mr. Donovan gave me extra time when I took my tests, I passed them with flying colors. I decided to use the sketch of Mr. Donovan's father for my first painting, when Miss Chu saw it, she just stood there and looked at it. Teresa, this sketch is so full of emotion and love. You have most certainly learned the language of art. Mrs. Mr. Donovan will be so moved. When I finished the painting, she said, Teresa, this painting is going to be part of the art show. 
you will be the only ex exhibiting artist who isn't a high school student. I couldn't believe it. Me? Me? In the spring art show? Later that day, Miss Chu asked me to stay after class. She handed me a package wrapped in bright red tissue paper and said softly, We Chinese believe that red things bring luck. And Teresa, remember this ancient Chinese proverb, Yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, today a gift. And that is why it is called the present, she smiled. When I opened the gift, I caught my breath. It was one of Miss Chu's painting smocks for me. I wanted to cry. When I looked in her eyes, she had tears too. Only a week later, I wore my new smock to the art show. Light was dancing off the mirror chandeliers. Our paintings were everywhere. I was so proud. Then I saw Mr. Donovan standing in front of my painting of his father. He couldn't speak. He took my hand and squeezed it. Miss Chu came up to us. She looked so radiant. It's beautiful, isn't it? She whispered to him. I looked at the two of them. Miss Chu was right. This moment was a present. It turned out to be the defining moment in my young life. I was set on a course to be an artist. It could be no other way. Thanks to the art of the amazing Miss Chu.